How's it going, good people? Today on the agenda, I will be doing a behind the scenes of the Christmas light show. This will be specifically related to the hardware. I will do a different video for the software as the software has a lot more involved with it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start here with the tree. So the tree is on the inside. Uh, this is one of several, like I have a Christmas tree inside and then I have actual trees outside. Uh, the interior Christmas light, Christmas tree has been added to the light show. It does have its own control box. It is a Raspberry Pi 3B with GPIO solid, with GPIO connections to the solid state relays. It has four channels and it has these traditional AC Christmas lights like the rest of my light show does as well, which I will show you the rest, the outside portion of everything here shortly. All right, next we're gonna go and show you the box. And so here we have the control box. Uh, if you've watched the previous 2021 and 2020 light shows, this is that same control box. Not much has changed. I did reconfigure the setup with the relays and the wiring of the relays, but that was about it when it came to adjustments made to the control box. Um, what happened was somewhere out in the off season, I did notice that a short developed in the breadboard wires that are used to connect to the GPIOs, to the, uh, the GPIOs on the Raspberry Pi, to the relay boards. I'm not sure where that short existed, but I know it existed. What I did though was because of the fact some of those wires had shorts, I just redid the whole thing. So I took all of the breadboard wires off. I brought them down to single level or single wires uh, because in some places I had double wires. So like, for example, I had wires like this where it is two wires because of the length of wire that had to be run to get this to work. So what I did was I just took uh, the double wires, made them into single wires as you see here, and that practically eliminated the shorts that I had on the control side of the lighting. I'm still using solid state relays. Um, we have actually three sets of eight channel relays. So this is eight, there's eight behind this, and then there's this eight over here. And you're probably asking, well, why is that green and why is that red? These are two different relay boards. Uh, so these two I bought together and then I was like, hey, I wanna add more. And so I bought a relay board again from the same company, but they sent a different model relay board and thus that's why that one's green. But the, they're still solid state relays. All right, coming down, so we have the incoming power that comes to this box here. This box has a GFCI on it. Um, so the power, that wire, this is the power that goes into the plug to the house, comes to this outlet here, GFCI protected. And the reason I use the GFCI in my control box is because my house was built in a time where GFCIs were not standard or even required. They probably didn't even exist at that point, the technology for it, that is. That being said, this is the only GFCI in the house. Uh, we have another GF uh, arc fault breaker, but this is the only GFCI that exists in the house and it's in the light show box. Last year, it did actually come into uh, good use on rainy days because apparently the tune to sign, which I will show you shortly, actually was developing a short with the ground and it was causing the GFCI to trip. So end up having to have a GF, uh, a tune to sign with no lights on it because for whatever reason it kept tripping. All right. So this is the black thing here is the power for the Raspberry Pi. So that comes down up and over and up there at the top. Uh, the white plug here is for the snowman that it sits on a porch. It is not being switched on and off this year. It is actually on 24 seven and it will continue to stay that way for this year's implementation of the light show. All right. So following the power supply to the Raspberry Pi, we then have all of the GPIO breadboard wires, uh, excuse me, the breadboard wires connected to GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. And those run the relays, which then runs the 120 volt circuitry to each of the outlets. Uh, also off the Raspberry Pi, you have this cord right here, which is the data transfer in addition to the power supply for the FM transmitter. Now, a lot of people say you gotta have a sound blaster card. And with this particular setup, you don't need a sound blaster card. Uh, what you do is in the Falcon Pi player software, you go in, well, you first you gotta plug in your FM transmitter into one of the USB ports on the Raspberry Pi. 
Once you do that, you go into Falcon Pi Player and go to where the audio output is and you select FM transmitter. It will have that, uh, the model number and then it'll say FM transmitter on it and you select that as your output. Now what that will do is it will then send the data out of your USB and the audio out of your USB to the FM transmitter. You don't get the static, you don't get the white noise, and you don't get a bunch of other things that you may get if you were to use the audio jack on the Raspberry Pi, the audio out on the Raspberry Pi to the audio in on the FM transmitter. Um, that being said, I've used this setup last year in my light show with the USB and it worked great. So I continue to use it again this year with the USB being plugged in directly to the FM transmitter. Now I did have and notice that there was some interference and I think that's because of the proximity of the uh, control wires here next to the antenna, which is this blue wire here. So I'm trying to get that more distant in here and uh, hopefully that'll stop. But that's something I just noticed. It's minor. You can still hear the audio perfectly fine. It just may have a little bit of white noise in it when that particular channel or channels turn on. All right. So that is all of the low voltage side of things. Now, if we come over to the high voltage side of things uh, from the, uh, I guess, initial box here, we come up to a bus bar. So we have a bus bar with all hots, and mind you, this is 120 volt uh, lighting that I do on my show. All my lights are AC. I don't do pixels. I don't intend on doing pixels. Yes, I know you can get all the cool colors and stuff like that nature. But for me, the simplicity in using AC lights, granted, I know some people, it is more dangerous. True. But the simplicity of being able to use AC lights is far easier, in my opinion, to deal with than trying to set up pixels and the other issues that people have had with using pixels. All right, enough of that sidebar. All right, so we're coming back. So we have the power in comes up to this bus bar and then all of the relays, each relay has its own fuse. And that's what is inside of these black things here. And in case you're wondering, the fuses look like this. So those two, uh, this actually is, comes in two pieces. So you unscrew it kind of like this is right here. You unscrew the other half of this and in the middle of this would be a fuse that looks like this. And you put that in and then you screw it back together and then you have your now have your fusible link. Uh, that one's actually disconnected because the other end of that has some sort of short in it. So yeah, it's just laying there for right now. So after we pass the fuse, we come up to the solid state relays. The solid state relays have a max amperage rating of two amps. That being said, the fusible link here has a two amp fuse. I believe the surge rating on this is two and a half amps. Uh, so you can get away with a two amp fuse long as that surge, uh, you know, doesn't exceed two and a half amps. Uh, because ideally in a surge scenario, the fuse would break first before that surge gets to the relays. In either scenario though, I do not have anything that's pulling more than probably like an amp or 1.5 amps. So I'm good in that regard. All right, so after it goes through the solid state relays, then we have these red wires here that goes to each of the outlets that you see on this side of the box. Um, so each channel has its own outlet. And then from there, each plug corresponds to a channel that is in each sequence and that goes out to the various items that are in the yard. That being said, let's go out into the yard. This is the entire display. We have everything set up here and it is kind of wet. So you may see some raindrops on the camera, but you got to do what you got to do, right? All right. So starting here, we have the tune to sign and it does have uh, some LED lights on it. They're supposed to be lit up, but apparently they're not for some reason. You might have to look into that. Uh, but the way this works is those LED strips actually go all the way around. And then from that, uh, they will light up the sign. This is the same tune to sign that I've used in years past. On the back side here, we have an LED controller. Uh, this controller is designed to be used with a remote control, and this is the IR receiver for that. 
I did have some issues with it setting it up and some reason when I connected it, it did develop a short of some sorts and that caused it to malfunction. So I'm not sure if some of the issues I've been having is, I'm assuming the issues I've been having have been because of that malfunction. Uh, I'll probably send it back and get another one or just get another one in general. I don't know, we'll see, but that's that. Next we have the trees. This is one of two actual trees, not Christmas trees that you see here. This year I did not use the red lights. However, I did not have enough time to take the red lights off of this uh, chicken wire that I used to wrap around a tree. That being said, the red lights are there, but they're not being used. In the off season, I will manage to take those off and I'll probably add more white lights to this to wrap the tree in the future. Um, just have a little cable tie here to, excuse me, not a cable tie, a uh, bungee cord there to hold the chicken wire around the base of the tree. And then you tie the light to the chicken wire, which makes disassembling this thing like very fast. Like you can just remove that, pull it around from the tree and it's done instead of wrapping it up and, you know, taking 20, 30 minutes to unwind it around the tree. You take that off and it's off in like 30 seconds to a minute. Likewise for the tree over there. Next, candy canes. So we have... A uh, total of 11 candy canes. These candy, the red ones are actually grouped in threes. Uh, so they're actually one, two, three are all on the same circuit. That's how they came out of the box. So that's how I am using them in the show. Um, this candy cane here is actually a set of string lights that have been stuffed inside of here. Uh, I believe it's 300 lights in each of the canes. And these canes here, I believe they have a total of 100 across the three set of lights or three set of canes. The white canes that are behind the red canes are used solely for support. Uh, the canes, the red ones came with the stakes that go into the ground. And for some of them, the stakes actually ended up breaking when, you know, during the off season and when trying to remove them. I had these additional white canes that I did not put out this year, but I had some additional white ones. And so I used the white ones to reinforce and hold the red ones in the ground. And so the red ones are actually, if you see the ones with the white next to them, those are just sitting there. They're not actually in the ground. It's the white one behind there that is holding the red one in the ground. Moving up closer to the house, we have the two windows here and here, as well as the shrub. And then we have the two windows up there that are kind of difficult to see whether it's actually lit or not, but they are lit. Um, I made an error in putting the lights up there because uh, I use cool white on that window, but all the other lights on the display are warm white. Yeah, those cool white lights will have to go and stash them somewhere else to not be confused in next year's show. Because those lights are up there, I did not feel like actually climbing back up there once I realized those were the wrong lights. So they just stayed for this year. As for the lights here, we have 200 on each window. Uh, the windows here actually do have the same mesh that the trees has, or excuse me, chicken wire that the trees has, which makes putting the lights up on the windows very easy compared to having to run the strand around there multiple times. Uh, here, the lights are just thrown on top of the bush and uh, they, as you kind of see, they are just hanging there in some parts. Uh, but ultimately the bush is still lit up. Over here, we have the garage as well as the porch columns. Uh, they are set up with 200 lights each. Uh, there's actually a third column around the corner there, but uh, all of those are set up with 200 lights each. <clears throat> Every item on the display here does have a separate channel, and that's how the lights work. The rain is starting to pick up, so I'm going to finish the rest of this video here on the porch sitting in the shade <laughs> or in the protection from the rain. Um, so one thing I will state is some people in last year specifically, Hey, you need to do pixels in your show. You need to add some color to it. And I'll be honest, I've given it some thought. I've paid attention to the X lights and the Falcon pie player groups. And for me, I will stick with my AC lights. Yes, I understand. I can add color. I can go by red, green, blue AC lights. But I realized, and even from talking with people that have come up to watch the show, 
they enjoy it with the lights that I already have. They don't say anything like, oh, you need to add color to it. They understand, hey, it's white lights. We get it. We like it. We enjoy it as it is. Another thing when it comes to that same regard is that the issues that I've seen when it, as it relates to pixels is concerning to me. Um, I've seen people where they've almost burnt down their house. I've seen people where because of the pixels, I've seen people where the props have burned up because of the pixels, uh, the quality control, the manufacturing, the misapplication of power, to, uh, power injection, a number of things that says to me, I don't want to have to deal with those issues. And for that reason, I choose to stick with AC lights. Now, there's the other argument. Well, AC lights are dangerous, you know, tinkering with that voltage. And that is true. However, I will say this. I did electrical engineering for two years. And one of those things that we had to do in electrical engineering classes was to build circuits. And some of those circuits did have AC voltage coming straight out of the wall. Uh, as always, one thing that they taught us in that class is before you touch anything on your circuit, turn it off first. Just simple, turn it off. <laughs> and then go do what you need to do and then turn it on. And if it doesn't smoke when you turn it back on, guess what? It must work. In. It must be working. Um, and so I practice that same thing that I learned in the classroom when it comes to building my light show with my AC lights. If it's something wrong with it, turn it off, fix it, turn it back on. Um, now, I'm not sure if everybody follows that tactic. Some people, oh, we just leave it on and tinker it with it as it go. And you can do that with DC voltage because typically DC voltage doesn't uh, have the risk of shocking you unless it's higher amount of voltage. Whereas AC, it doesn't matter. You can get shocked even with lower voltages. Um, so I will be sticking with AC lights. I know you're probably going to run to the comments and type. You shouldn't do that. But it's my show. I choose to do things in this manner. Uh, another thing I said I was going to stick with going for the long haul is white lights, um, because a lot of people, they don't really care about what color the lights are. They just care, care more so about you got lights that are synchronized to music and we want to see the lights. Matter of fact, there are several neighbors that have come by several times during the year uh, when the lights are up because of the fact they want to get out of the house and they want to see the lights. And uh, I actually talked to two people here recently. Um, one said, hey, I, you know, they live around the corner and they saw it last year and they came back around this year and they had their kids in the car and they were like, the kids are like insane about the lights. Like we have to come around here at least once a week for the kids sake. And that is the reason that I choose to stick with doing the lights the way that I do them because of the fact the people that enjoy them the most don't really care about the specifics of how they're done. Now I've talked to them about, Hey, this is what's required to do that. And they're like, that sounds like a lot. And it does. And it is. Um, but once you get everything set up, it's just a matter of plugging it back in and making sure it works when you plug it back in. Um, but a lot of people, like I say, they don't care about the colors. Some do, but some like, we just like to be able to bring the kids out to see what is possible and to enjoy the experience. And that's for me is satisfaction. If you have any questions or comments regarding the hardware of the Christmas light show, drop those down below. I will create a separate video for the software because the software is a whole different topic. Uh, we have X lights, we have Falcon Pi player, and we also have the Falcon Pi Twitter C sharp application that I created that posts the song and other information to Twitter. All right. So drop a comment, ask any questions, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.